Hi everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Property Chat. This week, lots of changes. First things first, talking back about the tenancy fees ban, which is coming live this June. On the 1st of June this year, you're no longer allowed to charge fees to tenants. So what does that mean? Well, you can no longer charge more than one week's rent to a tenant when holding a property for them. That's a holding deposit. That deposit must then form part of the rent. In other words, must be refunded as rent when they move in and you're only allowed to charge a maximum of five weeks deposit now we now understand this has been changing between six and five we now understand it's five weeks is the maximum deposit that you can charge and i'll come on to another solution for that in a moment and then of course your month's rent is normal and as far as the tenancy agreement's concerned there will be major considerations we'll come on to those in a separate video but we will be considering things like what you can charge and what's legal to put into a tenancy agreement because several clauses in the standard agreement may now be void because you can only charge a tenant exactly what your losses are and any more than that would be deemed an illegal fee so one to watch for and something to certainly consider another law which an amendment to the housing act just coming out is the fitness for human habitation act and that's coming out this march and this gives tenants a right to sue landlords and includes things like general disrepair and dampness and mold i know what you're thinking landlords will this be the nightmare scenario where tenants are taking lands to court and yet they're drying their clothes indoors in a room that's hermetically sealed, no open windows, and then those drying clothes are causing a damp problem, which is then being used as a weapon to beat the landlord with. Well, I'm sure judges are more reasonable than that, and obviously it would come down to evidence, but I do think it's something we've got to look for. And I genuinely don't believe that the majority of tenants will want to sue their landlords. I think the ones that may be interesting in this case are the local authorities who are often the worst purveyors of such issues, and they really do uh, seem to ignore some repair issues. And I think this will really make them pull their socks up because I can imagine tenants actually using this to make sure those repairs are carried out and good for them. So I see the point to it. Uh, landlords, we just need to be a little bit trepidatious about how it actually goes in reality, and we'll be watching that quite closely. We'll keep you updated on that. Um, other than that, zero deposits. There are lots of different deposit schemes around now. They're replacement deposit schemes. What's the idea? Well, the idea is, as you can only take five weeks deposit after June this year, instead of taking a deposit from a tenant, you could take an insurance premium. You couldn't actually take it. The insurer would take it if the tenant wanted to do it that way. So how it would work is the tenant would provide one week's rent as an insurance deposit. That would then be an insurance premium and it would mean that six weeks rent is the deposit that is insured by that one week's premium so the tenant pays one week's rent that one week's rent is a fee it's a fee to the insurer not to you so it falls quite within the realms of not an illegal payment as far as the fees ban is concerned but it allows the tenant to only pay one week's deposit or one week's rent although they'll lose that one week as opposed to the five weeks that most landlords will be demanding. From the landlord point of view, it will give them peace of mind of up to six weeks deposit in the event of a dispute. How does it work in the end of the day? Well, at the end of the day, what would happen is at the end of the tenancy, if there's a dispute over monies, or if the tenant hasn't paid their rent, then the insurance would actually pay the amount up to a maximum of six weeks of that deposit to the landlord once that's proven. If there's a dispute over things like cleaning, then the TDS, for certainly for the zero deposit scheme are actually the adjudicators of that scheme as well. So as far as the tenant and landlord adjudication process is concerned, that would be the same. The advantages would be from the landlord perspective, you wouldn't need to register your deposit because you're not holding one. And that means that you don't have to prove that you've registered that deposit when it comes to serving notice and any legal issues you might have later. From the tenant perspective, obviously you're paying less, although it is a fee, so you do lose that one week's rent at least then you're not paying and losing that uh, five weeks rent for a, a long period of time or five weeks deposit I should say. So it's an interesting proposition and it's certainly one that we're using. We're using zero deposit um, and I can't recommend it to you or otherwise because I'm not an insurance broker but certainly what it means is that tenants have that flexibility and it can mean mobility at an earlier point because as we all know finding five or six weeks deposit plus a month's rent is very difficult for tenants and it just gets over that hurdle. So an alternative for you and certainly one that we're using and learning at the moment. So uh, that's where we are on that. Um, apart from that, two appearances on Homes Under the Hammer this week. 
one in Forest Hill and one in Southfields. Um, they're not televised, we're just actually doing the shows today. And uh, nice to be busy with them. Their first looks as well, always the best ones to do. Hope you've enjoyed this week's edition of Property Chat. Thank you, thank you to all our new subscribers. It's great to see you all clicking on subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next week. Take care for now.